Hi, this is Tom Fittiman with Ventana Systems, and today I want to talk a little bit about infrastructure modeling and at the same time demonstrate Sable, which is a tool for wrapping a VenSim model in an attractive user interface. The model I'll show you today is about the Cape Cod bridges. Cape Cod's a spit of land in Massachusetts that's cut off from the mainland by a large canal and served by a couple of bridges. If you look at a traffic map, you can see that these bridges are often heavily loaded, particularly on summer weekends when the wait to get on and off the Cape can stretch into hours. So the thought is to add another bridge that provides some additional traffic lanes, but of course you want to do that in a way that's sensitive to environmental considerations and plays well with growth pressures and alternative traffic routes and other things to think about. And of course you have to figure out who's going to pay for it uh, and if that means drivers, what the tolls will be, and who bears the risk of escalation of project costs and deviations from traffic projections and other such uncertainties. If you look at the structure of this problem via a causal loop diagram, uh, you see that there are a lot of features of this situation that are pretty common to infrastructure projects and utility projects in general. When you deliver more capacity, more bridge lanes or whatever it is, uh, you do two things. One is you raise the attractiveness of the service. Uh, that may unleash more service demand actually in two ways. One through kind of short-term response to the uh, added service quality. Um, and of course that's happening because people are happier with the service, so that's a good thing. And you may also unleash long-term growth. So for example, on the Cape, having more bridge lanes decreases congestion, might increase total number of trips in the short run, but it also might induce more people to build houses on the Cape or otherwise travel there for vacation. The other thing that happens is you incur costs and you have to pay those back. Um, you can make payments in two ways actually. One is directly by charging a toll or a user fee of some kind. Uh, use that to pay back the uh, debt on the project. And the other possibility is actually that you get indirect revenue from property taxes or uh, vehicle registration fees or other sources from the growth that you unleashed. And that gives you an indirect revenue stream that can also be used to pay back the project, although of course in many cases it may be hard to uh, capture that because it's hard to make the attribution. There are also a couple of uh, positive uh, feedback loops here that lead to uh, vicious circles or uh, death spirals. Uh, one is that if you incur too much debt and you don't pay down the interest, it grows and grows. And the other is what's known as the utility death spiral, which is there may be a level beyond which you can't recover the cost uh, through user fees. Because, for example, if uh, traffic is lower than anticipated, that means the tolls collected will be inadequate, so you need to raise the toll. But raising the toll lowers the service demand, the traffic flow, even more. And in some conditions you may get into a situation where there's no toll that you can set that recovers your costs without simply extinguishing the traffic. Um, so there are a couple of uh, nasty situations where the debt starts piling up and the tolls can't uh, cover it and the project explodes and you need to be aware of that, manage for that. Uh, and particularly if you're doing a public-private partnership to finance the project, you need to understand who's going to bear that risk. Here's the model implementation of that. Of course, causal loop diagrams are nice to talk about, but they're not fully specified, and you generally learn a lot by going to an actual formal model that you can simulate to uh, generate scenarios. Uh, and perform tests and calibrate to data. So here's what that looks like. Um, over on the left here, I have essentially a random project generator that uh, 
determines the cost and schedule of the bridge construction project as a random distribution. We could, of course, plug in a project model, uh, but that was beyond the scope of this exercise and probably evolves on a little bit different time horizon. The project is kind of a five-year entity, whereas the uh, uh, full lifespan of the bridge is going to be uh, decades, and that's also the time horizon over which travel demand and uh, other factors evolve. So after you run the project, you generate a uh, balance that has to be repaid, a debt uh, balance. Um, so you spent the money in this outflow here. You have to pay it back with toll revenue and interest accrues over time. Uh, you also, through the construction project, create some additional bridge lanes. So I've modeled that as a stock here, and that determines the traffic capacity of the bridge. Uh, so we've got a mix of the financial and the physical here. Um, and of course, you could uh, get a little fancier about the traffic model that was implied um, by talking to traffic engineers and subsuming some kind of meta model of a more detailed traffic engineering model into this more strategic model. And then finally, we have the human factors over on the right. Uh, so the orange loop is the toll setting loop. So you can see the toll is a stock that gets adjusted at uh, intervals in response to pressures from what's actually needed to repay it. Of course, it might actually be fixed, in which case you uh, trade risk of a variable toll for risk of bankruptcy. Uh, and then the red and green loops here are essentially the market clearing of drivers looking at the relative attractiveness of different routes over different bridge spans, um, and also choosing uh, whether to travel or telecommute or fly or use some alternate mode. Uh, and then finally down here we have uh, relative travel demand, so this is the long-run growth pressure. And a number of these things, as you'll see a little later, have uncertainty associated with them uh, when we run it. So for example, the uh, future growth rate of the CAPE uh, is an uncertain parameter. And actually, uh, we could I haven't done it here, but we could also close the feedback loop so that the future growth rate depends to some extent on uh, the ease of travel to the area. So that's the model. Uh, let's take a look at policy experiments. Okay, uh, so here we have four charts, one showing the uh, project's balance, so uh, the red line's the base case, no bridge. The green line, we've spent down the balance to uh, 900 million or uh, $900 million in debt, and then it gets repaid by the toll. Over here you can see what the toll is per trip. And then in the lower panel, you can see the number of trips and the speed. And you'll notice the base case is in red again. So you'll notice that uh, the bridge, adding a new bridge, improves the uh, average speed over the spans. And that means people take more trips. And then we have some decisions to make here. Uh, we have the base toll level, so it's initially set at $2 a trip. Uh, there's a cap on that and an adjustment interval, and actually I'm going to set that to uh, 50 years, so saying that initially the toll is fixed at $2 a trip. Uh, symmetry means do we charge the same toll on the north and south spans? Uh, then uh, the target term is how fast do we want to repay the debt? Relative peak is about uh, peak versus off-peak travel load. And actually, there's some array detail that I didn't talk about in this model uh, that sets up two bridge spans and two load segments for peak and off-peak travel. And then finally, there's a the question of when do we start the bridge. And there are other assumptions that have to be plugged in as well, like what's the interest rate and so on. And some of those can be made uncertain. Okay, so we're looking at a simple base case project with a constant toll, and actually we might ask ourselves how do some other assumptions play out, like 
the cost of the bridge and so forth, and we could play around with that, change the uh, capital cost. Uh, you'll notice as I increase the capital cost, the toll has to be collected for longer to pay off the project. Um, and uh, I could change the duration and some parameters about the driving. But one thing I want to call attention to here is the uh, randomness. So I've set this up, as I said, with a random project generator and also some random parameters like the interest rate. I can scan over different possible realizations of the future. And as I do that, you'll notice that the repayment history of the bridge varies quite a bit if you watch the uh, balance in the top left chart here. And you'll see that there are some cases where the balance actually becomes deeply negative. I think here we've lost uh, $20 billion on the project, mostly through accumulation of unpaid interest. Um, so actually what we'd like to do is mitigate such situations. Um, and the reason we can't do that here is that the toll is fixed. So uh, if, for example, I just set a really high toll, presumably I can make this work out a little bit better. Uh, it turns out it takes $12 a trip um, to pay back this particular realization, which is not likely to make drivers happy. So it may be that I also need some better cost control on the uh, construction project, or I should simply uh, change the design to something that maybe adds less capacity but also spends less money. So what we'd like to do is make these decisions about trade-offs on the bridge project with full visibility of the risk. So we can do that by running Monte Carlo simulations that simultaneously test a lot of different futures for the bridge and project and its environment. Uh, so here's an example of that. And you'll notice with our base case with a fixed toll, uh, we have a lot of certainty in the toll, some uncertainty in when it ends, as you can see in the top right panel here. Uh, but we know that it's going to be $2 as soon as the bridge is finished for some period, roughly 20 years, maybe longer if uh, repayment is a problem because of high interest rates or low demand or some other factor, uh, cost overruns in construction. Um, and actually you can see that the way that transpires in the for the uh, total debt balance of the bridge, five or ten percent of the time the project is actually failing uh, because the uh, project debt is spiraling out of control. So then we could look at measures for mitigating that. We could simply uh, raise the toll uh, or we could make the toll uh, flexible. Um, so let's say it can be adjusted annually. Uh, now you start to see a uh, different outcome. Um, so here you can see now that uh, we've established relative certainty that the project will be repaid and won't go bankrupt, spiraling out of control. Uh, but we've traded that for a certain amount of uncertainty in what the toll itself will be. Um, so we now have a much broader distribution of tolls, and in some cases it can be as high as $10, $12. Uh, so again, we may want to explore other measures to uh, delay the, on the start of the project or change its design try to change the cost parameters in order to uh, get a distribution that's mutually attractive to both the, say, the financial sector or the uh, state entities that are financing the project and to the uh, drivers and residents of the Cape who get to pay the toll. In closing, I'd like to just point out the huge gap between this interactive dynamic, risk-driven look at the bridge project and the way a public process usually unfolds. Normally you have a project that's presented as a uh, single option without any chance to influence the design parameters. It's analyzed uh, with essentially uh, little or no reference to risk. Uh, so you don't, you know, you know one possible probably rosy future, but you don't know the full spectrum of possibilities for the project. 
Uh, and it may be that a lot of the analysis is actually done by rating agencies using uh, methods that may be transparent in the sense that you know the uh, checklist of things that they consider, but you never know the underlying structure of the model that they're using to evaluate the project. I think we can do a lot better in our public processes. Thanks for looking, and be sure to check out Ventana Systems and Venity and Vensim, our family of simulation software.